Hello landlords, it's Ernie, I'm back. And today we're talking all about terrible tenants. Let's get started. I'm all about helping landlords. If you're a landlord and you have a question, do not hesitate to leave your question in the comments below. If you like what you see, give us a like. And if you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing. So today I'm gonna to share a story of an absolutely terrible tenant. I will use no names, so anonymity will be protected. But if you have a story, I'd love to hear about it. Tell me in the comments if you have had a story with an absolutely terrible tenant. Listen to the end. I wanna know if you've experienced anything similar to what I've experienced uh, with this particular case. Uh, it went on for months and months and months uh, there's a chance it's still going on. I want to know your experiences. Share in the comments below. So the first case I'm going to tell you about is the case of the sovereign citizen tenant. Now this guy was something else. Um, along with having a hard time keeping still, keeping quiet during trial, uh, he had a peculiar worldview. He never signed his name. In fact, he had a hard time revealing what his name actually was. When he submitted documents, he used a pseudonym. And for a while, I thought he was represented by counsel. But when I looked the name of this attorney, or this alleged attorney, up with the state bar, nobody had that name. There was no uh, way to identify an actual attorney by the name that he was using. When he showed up at trial, I asked him point blank, are you represented by counsel? And I asked him, who is such and such who signs all of your pleadings under this name? And he proceeded to say he didn't know. <clears throat> Which I found strange. And somehow the court just gave him a pass. Later, he admitted that it was him, but that he was using that name in an effort to protect himself. I'm not exactly sure from whom, but that's the way he wrote his documents. Okay, no big deal. But the way he signed his documents was even worse. It seemed obvious that he was using a thumbprint, a red thumbprint, which could have been blood? I don't know, but for some reason he preferred to add, uh, along with his diatribe against the government and the courts and my client, um, he would add his thumbprint to everything that he submitted to the court. Uh, I'm not sure how this made things any more official, but this is something he liked to do. Always in red though, always, always in red. So he shows up to trial. I was hired at the appeal level. I didn't file the original uh, eviction. I didn't make any of the original pleadings. I showed up on appeal to assist a client uh, when this particular sovereign citizen appealed uh, an unfavorable judgment in the Justice Court. So we're in county court and we're in front of a pretty tough judge and once this guy starts going, in my mind I'm thinking, oh, she's about to let him have it. Because this was not the kind of judge you would toy with. She had a firm grip on her court and nobody got out of line. Except for this guy. And I, to this day, I don't understand how she let him get away with so much. He interrupted me. He interrupted my client. He even interrupted the judge. And more than once she told him, I'm going to give you one last warning before I kick you out of my court. And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, you could have done that three warnings ago. In any case, he presents his story. It's a convoluted story that unfortunately involved a convoluted transaction. This guy had a home and a promissory note. Uh, he lost that home in a foreclosure, but not before the original holder of the promissory note sold the note to somebody else. That party foreclosed um, because there was no highest bidder at the foreclosure sale, they became the owner, they sold it to another party, that party sold it to my client. Needless to say, there was not a direct connection between my client and the sovereign citizen. 
But for an eviction, you don't really need that. In fact, the issue of title shouldn't even come up in an eviction, but it came up super big in this particular one. He raised a, an argument that my client could not evict him because he was not the original party to his documentation. We submitted everything to the court and showed that my client had acquired title from A who got it from B who got it from C who got it from him. However, the judge was unwilling to make a ruling at the time of trial. I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but sometimes courts, for whatever reason, freak out and they're not willing to make a ruling. They'll say something like, well, I'm going to take all this under advisement and I'll get back to you. And it took three weeks, but she finally did get back to us and she wrote her opinion out, which is not common. She wrote out an opinion along with the final judgment in favor of the defendant. So I had to explain to my client what her recourse was. She could either A, start the entire process over again, I would be happy to frame the lawsuit in a way that I thought would be successful, or she could file an appeal up to the Court of Appeals. Well, the appeal through the Court of Appeals would have taken anywhere from nine months to who knows how many years. Uh, that's just how long appeals up there uh, can last. And so she figured, I'm gonna try it on my own. And she said, well, thank you, Mr. FCI. I appreciate your help, but I'm going to, I'm going to try this on my own. So it turns out about eight months later, I bump into her at the courthouse. She had hired another attorney, a very capable, very, a great attorney. I, I, I like him a lot. She hired another attorney. He won in the justice court and then came back to the county court where he won. He was successful. Uh, great job. She obtained a writ of possession, which enabled her to recover her property back. And in the process of rehabbing the home, which the sovereign citizen had thoroughly <clears throat> unhabbed, one night, he comes back. He'd been removed. She's rehabbing. One night, he comes back, reestablishes possession. When I bump into her, she says, I'm having to evict him a third time. And you could tell she was at her absolute wit's end. But the police wouldn't remove him because he had documentation. He had a lot of documentation. To them, they took their default position. Hey, this is a civil matter. We're not going to touch it. Or your paper, because it looks like you have blood on it. The sovereign citizen, the tenant that would not be evicted. If you enjoyed this video, we invite you to like and subscribe. Follow our links to even more great content. We are always adding to this collection. If you have a video topic you'd like to see, comment below.